All right, welcome to the second part of our interior visualization tutorial. So this is our scene we'll be working with. Uh, there will be no uh, cleanup phase like we did uh, in the automotive visualization tutorial because the architectural visualization scenes are usually quite clean by default. There's not much to clean up. So the, let's say you have your average visualization scene. It can be ever motion and it can be seen you got from someone or even the scene you created yourself. Uh, what I usually do, the first thing is I just assign gray clay kernel material to the entire scene to make sure there is nothing weird in my scene, some forgotten material or some material with the, with the wrong setup. So all we really have right now is just scene with gray kernel material. We have to start shading the scene. And in order to do that, we first need to have uh, some lighting. And to set up lighting, we first need our light to enter through somewhere. And as you can see, there are now some kind of windows with glass so it's attached together and if we check this out the id for the glass seems to be one and if i check the other window too again it's one so it's gonna be same everywhere and let's see how many material IDs there are looks like free is the last one okay so let's get multi-subject material let's call it windows temp as in temporary let's also quickly check if the windows do actually have some thickness okay there seems to be How many planes? Let's just move it aside to see. Okay, so windows do have thickness, therefore we won't be using thin glass, we'll be using regular thick glass. So let's assign window stamp to this. Did I delete it or what just happened? Oh no, I just went to the wireframe mode. Okay, good. And so our clay material we go will go to the two and three slot and in the one slot we'll have some generic glass material so let's call it glass and put it in here great now we have windows with glass one thing you will see me doing throughout the tutorial is grabbing this corona mtl reflection material it's a material I have saved in a material library with uh, some changed uh, defaults and just one default I've changed is this material has a reflection to 1.0. If you've seen the PBR tutorial, you know why basically when we are using PBR workflow, the, the vast majority of the materials will have full 1.0 reflection by default. So. I don't have do that. I don't have to do that every time. I will just grab this reflective material. If we just now go to render settings, the render settings here are completely default. But just to make sure, I'm going to switch the render to something random and switch back to Corona. This way the render settings will reset. And now I'm sure I'm starting at the same point that you will be when you're, you will reset your settings. And if I just render quickly and wait for it, we can see we have completely black scene. That is correct. So let's quickly just first switch to some bit more preview resolution. And let's start with the shading, I mean lighting of our scene. So just, I'm just gonna quickly clean this stuff up. Okay. 
and we will use just one HDR map to <clears throat> to do basic natural daylight lighting in our scene. So let's go to background HDRI HDR maps. Oh, I mean uh, no emotion. And let's use some daylight HDRI like this one. So this is from no, no emotion, the source I showed you in a previous part. Let's open this. I'm gonna turn off the filtering to speed up rendering just a bit. View the image. And we have nice daylight image. But if I extend this, and go to the output and start decreasing the output amount. You can see there is some dynamic range, but there is not too much of it. So what will likely happen is if I put this into our environment slot, let's call it Enviro just for a good organization. I will enable our viewport background. I will save the scene and I will try not to do it very often. Increase our field of view and enable our Corona Interactive. <coughs> okay, so you can see there is a bit of delay when I'm moving around the scene. <clears throat> that is because for interior, we need UHD cache, but UHD cache calculates quickly before the actual rendering starts. And the way it works for interactive is it uses one quarter of the precision value. So in this case, precision is one. It uses 0.25. So, I actually want, it, want the feedback to be even faster, so I will set precision to 0.5. This way it will be something like point, point 0.13 or something like that, or 0.15 for the uh, interactive. So now if I move around our scene, it will update fairly quickly. Okay, <clears throat> now I want my sunlight to be going in about this angle like from the camera inside so what i'm have to do what i will have to do is just get the sunlight to be arriving from around here so let's quickly go to the output u offset i mean bitmap u offset and let's aim the sun from about this angle which actually seems right And if I now increase the multiplier to, let's say, 5, or even 10, actually, let's do 10. You can see that uh, despite having an HDR map, we don't have too much of a sharp sun shadows. There's one trick we can do. Of course, we can always just add in Corona Sun, but I'm going to show you one trick you can do to make HDR maps out of low dynamic range images. We'll enable color mapping and for some reason I cannot zoom into the curve which is weird well anyway we'll try to do it without zooming we'll add a new point we'll set the values both of the values to 0.98 so at 0.98 it will have 0.98 value which is correct that's exactly what we want Actually, let's switch to RGB and do that again. We need separate RG and B curves. Okay. And now if I grab this endpoint, which is uh, which, which is in the end, we will be basically adjusting only the values from one up and above 0.98. So we won't be touching most of the HDRI except the complete highlights. And now let's set this to 1.1. And immediately you can see our scene has lit up and that we have we are having some sharp shadows or, or rather sharp sunlight. 
Not completely sharp, but a bit sharper than what we had before. The problem here is obviously it's way too blue. So when the AGR was captured and then clamped, uh, so so was so was the uh, high dynamic range. So all the values above uh, their color was clamped too. So now we need to return some color in there. So let's just grab only the red channel and maybe boost it to like 1.12. That will make it slightly more red. Let's get let's grab the blue one because there's most of the blue and let's decrease it to only like 1.05 maybe even less like 1.04 and we can see now we have overall blue uh, i mean green hue on our image so what we have to do here is just grab the blue blue point and again decrease it somewhere in between like this. And now you can see, even though we had fairly low dynamic range image, we have an image that provides us, I mean HDR image that provides us with some kind of sharp shadows. Not completely sharp, just some like sunlight that's from half behind the cloud, which actually looks nice. So this is kind of neutral environment. And let's now just do quick production render. And what I tend to do when I'm setting up scenes these days is get just a little bit of tone mapping going because if in case you are, for example, replicating materials from some photos, then you will often already see photos that uh, the camera has put some sort of color correction on just slight tone mapping so i will do just 1.5 for the highlights and 0.5 for the filmic shadows 1.5 for the contrast and 0.5 for the exposure which may be actually a bit too much so like 0.35 all right so yeah this is this is the lighting for our scene basic quick nice setup and i don't think there's much else to do in this part so in the next part we'll jump straight to the shading so see you then